You're watching Brockton Community Access. Mark Lindy, the GM here at BCA. Uh, tonight we have the Ward 2 City Council debate. The two candidates that are running are City Councilor Tom Monahan, who's the incumbent, and Angel Cosme, did I say it right, I That's hope? That's right. Um, who is the challenger. I also have in studio my two panelists that have been helping us with election coverage this year. Steve Foote, the former chair of the Brockton Democratic City Committee, now unenrolled. And Shana Barnes, who's a member of the Democratic City Committee, and she's a current counselor at large, uh, counting the days till retirement. Anyway. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up with opening statements. Um, each candidate did, did a wonderfully scientific drawing out of a water pitcher. And uh, Tom is going to start with his opening statement. Tom Monahan. Good evening. I'm Tom Monahan. I have been your Ward 2 City Councilor for the past eight years. Um, mar married to my wife, Laurie, for the past 38 years. She's a bookkeeper at St. Patrick's. I have five children, uh, my daughter Jennifer. Son Tommy, who's a uh, staff sergeant in the United States Marine Corps. My son Michael, he's also the uh, head coach of the Bridgewater State Hockey Team. Uh, my son Dan, and my son Tim. Um, I've worked at Columbia Gas for the past 36 years and have been a proud member of Local 273 Utilities Workers Unions of America. I've also been a steward for the last 26 years. Um, I've also, I was a school police officer, actually, for a year before t uh, Prop two, two and a Half came in. I was a park commissioner in the city of Broughton from 1996 until I was elected in 2010. I volunteered over the years in this city for, um, coaching youth baseball, hockey, and basketball. And also my family has been in the city since 1850 and have been actively involved in the city and the community since then. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Angel? Sure. Uh, my name is Angel Cosme and I'm running for Ward 2 City Councilor. Uh, first of all, I want to thank BCA um, moderator Mark Lindy and facilitator Steve Foote and Councillor uh, Shana Barnes, as well as the voters for tuning in. Uh, I am an educator, a father, a professional community organizer, former substance abuse clinician and mental health counselor. I possess a bachelor's degree uh, in psychology and a master's degree in education uh, with minors in Latino studies and anthropology from the University of Massachusetts and possess teaching licenses in history, martyred disabilities, as well as sheltered English instruction. I have taken many leadership, research, political, and public policy classes, including the LLI, the Latino Leadership Initiative at Harvard Kennedy School, the Initiative for Diversity and Civic Leadership, and the Inter-University Program uh, for the Latino Leadership in Washington, D.C. As a professional community organizer with Brockton Interfaith Community, I successfully advocated for a drug court opposed the casino, advocated for criminal justice reform, educational equality, immigrant rights, and promoted positive and accountable police and community relations. I have also managerial experience and have served as a clinical supervisor of uh, Boston HMO, and uh, I'm just excited to be here and represent Ward 2. Thank you. Okay, we'll go right to the questions. Um, Steve Foote first. Uh, Good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching this. Folks, uh, I'm going to ask you the question that the people on the street really uh, like me to ask, and uh, I'm asking all the candidates this, so it's not uh, geared to either one of you personally. Now that mar recreation, recreational marijuana is legal, do either of you use recreational marijuana or any other drugs, and would you take a drug test if asked? Start with Angel. Um, I have. I have used it before. I, I, I mean... Growing up in the environment that I did in the projects in, in, in Rhode Island, I was exposed to it. Um, it is a, a legal substance. I, I've actually since became a, a drug and alcohol counselor. Um, and so it's, it's something that I think is very controversial. It is legal. If you're 21 years old, you can, you can use it in this city, in this state. Um, the problem with that is the perception of the legality of it and the youth using it. Um, and the disruption that it causes um, in, in, in society. So that, that's my concern, more so the youth. If you're an adult and you're responsible, um, it is legal. If it was illegal, that's a different conversation. And would you be willing to take a test to fast? Absolutely. Okay, okay Tom, same question. Uh, no, I've never used it. I've been around people who have used it. I just like smoking anyway, but I'm just saying, I never have done it. Um, and uh, I take drug tests all the time working at the gas company with my job, so I have no problem at all taking a uh, drug test. That was quick. Shana, your first question. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, gentlemen, for coming. So um, 
a lot of, well, not a lot of the city councils, but a few of the councilors, current councilors, are veteran councilors. Councilor Monahan, I, at this particular point, I think you'd be considered a veteran councilor. Um, what are your feelings on term limits for city councilors in, in Brockton? Now, I'm not talking about the term, the, the length of the actual term. I'm talking about serving uh, consecutive terms. Okay, we'll start with Tom. Um, your term limit is the vote. As far as I'm concerned, if, people, if you're doing a good job and people want you back in there, they'll vote you. If they don't want you to be back in there and they don't think you're doing a good job, they'll, uh, they won't vote for you. So, I mean, to me, that's the term limit. I think, um, you know, as we've gone along, you learn more of the job as you go along more and more, and that's more beneficial as we go along uh, year after year. So it's not an easy job to do. Uh, you don't well, go into the job just knowing what's, what is going on. You have to learning process. So I think the longer you're in there, as long as you're doing that job, you're learning, and you're doing good things for the city of Broughton, uh, I think basically that term limit is what the people think, and that's what they and they can vote you in or out. Okay. Uh, Angel, same question. Yeah, I, I would agree with, with Councilor Monaghan. I, I uh, would be opposed to, to term limits. I think um, in a de democratic society like we have here in the United States, it is um, the people who vote. And so if a person is, is uh, putting someone in office, it's up to that individual or, or uh, you know, if they gain the votes to, to stay in office. Um, on the flip side, I could see the concern that people have with, with uh, individuals who are in office, um, similar to educators. If, if you're uh, in office and you've become stagnant and, and you're not producing and you're not making changes, um, I could see why people would be in favor of, of term limits. Uh, with that said, ultimately the people have the power. And so if they keep voting this individual in, um, it, it is sort of the way that it, that it goes in terms of um, them holding office. So, Thank you. Thank you. Steve, next question. Uh, ward 2 is uh, mostly a minority ward. About 78% of Ward 2 is minorities. Yet they've never elected a minority candidate out of Ward 2. Um, is race a factor in this election? Why or why not? Okay, we're going to start with Angel. Sure. Yes, race is absolutely a factor. It, if we ignore race, then I think we're, we're kidding ourselves. In a contentious political climate, national climate, um, race is at the forefront of a lot of things from uh, the situation in Puerto Rico um, to the immigrant debates. If we ignore race in, in our political process, um, we're doing a disservice to the people. With that said, we don't have to be divisive about the issue. I'm all for diversity in a place like Brockton that is extremely diverse in a ward like Ward 2 which is extremely diverse, uh, we have to have such conversations. I think we have power um, in our collective efforts and our collective diversity. We need representation. It's 2017, we've never had a, a Latino candidate. Just two years ago, we had the first, uh, Councillor Barnes was the first African-American woman in the council. Uh, Councillor um, Rodriguez was the first Cape Verdean, and, and that was just two years ago. And so I think we need everyone to represent, it, and it should just be reflective of the city, in a, in a city that is arguably majority minority or very close to it, it's only right that um, qualified candidates are, are represented at the elected official office. So it is very much a factor. Tom, I'd question. like to uh, we repeat the question as far as when you say what is race? Uh, is race a factor a in fact the election? A race, when you mean, in what sense are you talking about? Is race, is race because we have two different candidates of different races? Or, or is, it the, is, it, that is it that plus, because the... Plus, as uh, Mr. Cosmo uh, just noted, the national dialogue about race, do you think it's going to have an effect? Does it affect anything? Or is, or is this a situation where uh, you just, uh, you, you two, you two guys, if you happen to be I, I think races? I think it's, um, uh, over the past eight years, I mean, I don't... I've dealt with every race, every creed, everyone in my ward. It makes no difference to me what race you are. The job is to do the job for your ward and the people in your ward. And if the people in your ward have to be different races and quite diverse, I, I mean, it doesn't make any difference to me what you are. So, I mean, as far as race being involved, uh, I don't know really if that's a factor. I think if you're doing the job and you represent, you represent all the people in your ward, which I have done over the past eight years, I don't think it's really an issue I'm, to me. I mean, it's doing your job, work with everybody uh, of every race, color, and creed, and, and that's what I've done, and I think that's what, that's what this election is about. It's doing your job for the city of, citizens of the city of Broadham, for your ward, and for the whole city, and that includes everybody. There's no separate, to me, whatever you are, it's doing the job for the residents, for your constituents, and your ward, and the city. Okay. 
Shane, the next question. Thank you. I, this is actually one question, but I have to ask it in different ways for because of, of your stations uh, in, in this campaign. So, um, Mr. Uh, shall I ask? Tom would be first. Tom first. Okay. All right. So, Counselor, um, in your opening statement, you spoke about your family's history and uh, being here since the late 1800s and some more personal information about you. Mm -hmm. Now, understanding that um, since you were elected in 2010, you've not had a candidate, correct? Have you I mean, ever had I haven't a had an opponent. You have had an opponent? No, you said I haven't had a candidate. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm have you had an opponent? <laughs> an opponent. <laughs> Until now. An opponent. Have you had an opponent from 2010 no, to now? No, no, no. Okay, with that, with that understanding, um, and that you didn't really mention anything about uh, you know, why someone should vote for you, why should the residents of Ward 2 vote for you now, now that they have a choice? I was saving that for the end. Oh, well, <laughs> the time is now, my friend. All right, my friend. Then you've just ruined my closing statement. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, I mean, over the years, I have a, I get a list of different things I've done. I mean, I have been probably the most, if not the most, uh, accessible counselor. I, and I, my opponent will probably agree. He's called me numerous times uh, to help out. I've always been there. You call me. I work for you. I get the problem taken care of. I'll do it probably the same day, because if I don't, I forget it. <laughs> at my age, but uh, seriously, uh, I, I've been the chair of the ordinance committee, I've been the chair of the, the counts committee, uh, I've worked on the grants that developed James Edgar Playground, the grant that developed the uh, Charles Italia Park. Um, when we had the massive shootings, it seemed like we had like 10 of them in six weeks uh, a few years back, mm -hmm. two different times. I brought together the public in a meeting at the unknown school, brought in the state police, the mayor, the police chiefs, FBI, to speak about these different uh, issues and to, tw to help uh, take care of the concerns of the residents. Uh, what else do I know? I developed a grant writing team that I first year in there under Mayor De uh, Balzotti. I got the people together because by obviously writing grants, we're going to get more money for the city. Unfortunately, I put them together. Two weeks later, she never did anything with it. So that went out the window, but I did form that. And now the mayor has a grant writing uh, team right now. Um, what else? I, the, um, the city planner. I was on the, me, Councilor Brophy, Councilor McMillan, put together the ordinance so, to bring back a city planner and planning department into the city. So, uh, and that was, I don't know, maybe my second term. I'm trying to remember that. Um, Vincenti's Market. I worked on that, that, that uh, Pleasant and Warren Ave since the day one I was in there, trying to get somebody to take that property working with B21 and Mary Walden. Finally, that came to fruition. Um, what else? Oh, tax abatement workshops. Everybody was upset about the taxes going up. Some people weren't sure how to do that. I've run tax abatement sh workshops every year, except for the last one. The mayor did that uh, to help people understand if your bill was too high, you thought it was too high, you, there's, a, there's a way out. You can, you, um, you can, we could, uh, I'm going to cut, you cut me off? So, she just saying. asked me. I'm the, yeah. You want to go? What I'm, I mean, I have a numerous things. I'm at things two minutes now. So, so I mean, I've done numerous things over the years to help out my the constituents and and the city. I think. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. And so, just in a different form. So, I have to ask you, uh, not having experience being in political office in Ward Two or, or anywhere, um, what qualifies you specifically to uh, represent Ward Two on the City Council? It's a good question. Twenty. It's a good question. Um, so. I may be new to running for office, but I'm, I'm not new to um, pursuing social justice and, and fighting and advocating for, for Brockton and for our state and our um, national elections. And so I, I've, I've worn multiple hats um, from, from my academic um, attainment to my political courses that I've taken throughout the years to running a mayoral campaign here in the city a couple of years ago. Um, I absolutely have experience in, in addressing issues, um, just not at the legislative level. Um, as a community organizer for Brockton Interfaith, uh, as a volunteer for Brockton Interfaith, I've worked on uh, everything from opposing the casino to uh, increasing the minimum wage and, and fighting for earned sick time. Um, I've, I fought for education equality and trying to diversify the teaching staff to be more reflective of the city of Brockton. Um, I've worked on issues of uh, restorative discipline and restorative justice, immigrant rights, um, criminal justice, uh, reform. Uh, we have a broken criminal justice system that is uh, arguably uh, biased and, and issues of mass incarceration and um, you know those, those issues I, I brought up to, to the public here in Brockton uh, in a number of settings and forums. Um, I've worked extensively with our youth. Our youth is one of our most valuable assets and um, I've, I've 
help to uh, run programs like uh, Our Voices out of Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, which is a social, uh, emotional uh, program for young people. The Boys and Girls Brigade is more of a spiritual program that I help to uh, facilitate as well. Um, working with the Sound Lab here in Brockton to, to uh, you know, provide an avenue for our at-risk kids um, in, in attaining you know, a, a program um, that teaches everything from DJing to music production, sort of using what the youth gravitate towards in a constructive manner. Um, youth Works is a program here in the city, and I've helped you know, about a dozen young people get jobs, um, which keeps them off the streets. Uh, I've worked as a mental health clinician as an, as an adolescent. And so all of these experiences, I'm a father of a 15-year-old, um, and so uh, as an educator, as a, as a former clinician, former substance abuse counselor, former community organizer, I've been uh, working in the city trying to alleviate pain and suffering, and, um, and that's what I will continue to do. Thank you. Thank okay. you, gentlemen. Um, next question is Steve. Uh, as a counselor, if you're elected and as a counselor not currently, uh, would you ignore federal law and vote to make Brockton a sanctuary city? Start with Angel. Sure. Um, I, I am absolutely in favor of protections for our immigrant community. And the reason for that, I want to explain, is that there's a misperception of, of immigrants as criminals, and, and the data does not reveal it. In fact, I was just discussing that today. Um, the data shows that most criminal activity is committed by native-born persons, not, not immigrants. Um, so that's, that's one fact. Um, we have hardworking immigrant families here in the city who wake up and go to work and take care of their families and provide for their children. Um, and are innocent, um, hardworking, non-criminal individuals. And so that's who I advocate for. And really, I just want to put a twist on, on the sanctuary city designation. To be a sanctuary city as a person of, of, of spiritual beliefs, why is that a bad thing? Why if we are providing uh, a haven for those that are marginalized, and, and there is no clear pathway for, for immigrants to become citizens, if there was, many of them would be in line. I think if we made it easier for them to become citizens, um, if we created English classes, I'm all in favor of those uh, opportunities. But because that doesn't exist at the level that it needs to, we have a growing immigrant community here in Brockton. They're here, they're, they're oftentimes ignored, and I think it wouldn't be a bad thing to uh, provide some, some protections for those individuals. Not the criminals, that's, that's a whole different conversation. I'm talking about the hardworking majority of the folks who are immigrants. We are all immigrants here in this country. Um, we've all come from different places. Tom. So, but, uh, but how would you vote? Because that's probably going to be coming to a vote in the next year. I would vote in favor of it. Mr. Monaghan knows that I've worked with him uh, on trying to pass the Trust Act for the last couple of years. I, I was one of the proponents working for Brockton okay, Interfaith. Okay, so you're in state. favor of the I'm, sanctuary I'm, city. Okay. I'm in favor of passing laws to protect our immigrant okay. brothers and sisters. Okay, Tom, minute 30. Okay, minute 30. Yep. That's all that was? <laughs> yep, it was. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, actually, myself, uh, Angel, uh, uh, Shana Bonds and myself met with Angel and Vic trying to come up, up with a way to uh, get the Trust Act. Um, a, it fell past, maybe not really so much past, but we're trying to understand it exactly. Uh, the pro, Shana and I actually, we were trying to work to find a way to help the immigrants to become citizens. It's, a, it's really a tough road to do it. It's not easy. But then others are here legally and have gone through the past. So, I mean, it's a tough, tough thing to go through. But as far as the, uh, the immigrants that are here in the city, like Angel said, we're all immigrants. My family came as immigrants. Everybody's an immigrant. So we do want to protect the legal immigrants, the immigrants that are here, not the criminals, like Angel said. The, that's totally off the board. But the, uh, what we have in the city now, what we do in the city now, is exactly what the Trust Act wants to do. We're not bothering uh, uh, immigrants. We're not looking for anybody that, uh, if, you get, if you call the police department, they're not going to check and see if you're Ill illegal or not or whatever. So I think we do what the um, uh, Trust Act wants to do to protect uh, immigrants. But I'm not really in favor of a sanctuary city because basically, I think I mean, we talked about it earlier, that the uh, president um, has mentioned that if you are uh, designated and there's no checkbox to see if you're a, a sanctuary city. The Trust Act, if we passed it, could possibly say, okay, you have that, so you're a sanctuary city. And we could lose $28 million in rev federal revenue. So if we're going to be, de I would not designate us as a sanctuary city, but I would protect the immigrants that are in the city, city now. So you're a no on sanctuary yeah. city? Yes. Okay. okay.
Uh, next question would be Shane. Okay. Um, so, uh, Council Monaghan mentioned a few years ago, four years ago or so, there was a rash of uh, violence, some significant violence in the Ward 2 area, particularly around Edgar Park um, and that whole kind of complex. So, granted, over the years, it's the, the violence has, has calmed down, but do you, my first question is, do you, uh, do you attribute that to just trends in violence or uh, was there something going on in that area that either one of you two were personally involved in to keep that down? Tom first. <clears throat> um, basically, a lot of that was um, foolishness over uh, gangs uh, with a girl. <laughs> the information we found out was kind of, kind of crazy. So they were going after one another. Um, but what we did was we increased the police uh, act, uh, patrols in that area. Uh, we put cameras in Edgar, James, James Edgar Park. That was another, uh, another uh, thing we did. Uh, FBI got involved. So we were actually on it, doing things to, to quell that. It happened a couple of times, but it did go away. Now, I mean, other things that happen with crime is also uh, domestic violence, which we cannot control that. That's part of the, that, that's gonna happen anywhere. But uh, I think just by, Increasing police pe presence in the area, the walking beats and what have you, that sort of helped get things down. FBI was involved, and uh, the mayor and uh, the police department did a good job of quelling that. Okay, Angel? Uh, I, th I think <coughs> while those, those are um, needed um, approaches, I, I think it's more of a, a reactive approach instead of a, a proactive approach. I think kids are going to be kids, and they need things to do, and um, we really need to invest in, in our youth in my opinion, um, you know, would it, it, it would be nice if we had places like a movie theater. I know we used to have movie theaters here. I heard the, the administration say that it's not profitable for a movie theater to be here. But sometimes we have to put people's lives and, and, and um, youth engagement over, over profit. And, and um, I want Brockton to be profitable, but I think we need more opportunities for our youth. We have a lot of programs here. We need to streamline um, these opportunities so that people know that they're available. Um, but I was not involved, to answer your question, in, in, in the Edwards Park situation. Um, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the cameras and, 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 you know, the FBI, that's, that's after the fact. And, and we just need to get a little bit more creative in, in trying to prevent those things from occurring. And, and it is hard. It's, it's not any one person, any one administration can control that. Um, but if we figure out prevention uh, efforts, education, opportunities for young people in the city, then we'll start to see trends going down. About six minutes left. Okay, so I'm going to ask the last question, and then we'll go to closing statements. Um, <coughs> well, excuse me while I choke to death. Sorry. <laughs> um, Ward two has um, the downtown in it. Part of it's two, and part of it's five, right. from what I understand. Mm -hmm. So my question is, your idea <coughs> to jumpstart downtown? We have housing, we have parking garages. What else? I'm going to start with Council Monaghan. Okay, actually we have plans coming from the planning department downtown. We have the urban plan for downtown. We have the downtown plan. We also have the uh, incubator program that uh, the city planning department is working on in the uh, in, um, uh, Frederick Douglass Way, the buildings that the city owns there. Uh, we have 40R, which is bringing disposable income. Uh, a couple of plans we're working on the, at um, the old Kresge building, which I'm involved with that. They're, they're going to bring in uh, businesses and apartments. Uh, they're in that, the workforce, um, workforce housing program, which is going to actually give people that making thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, uh, the price for the apartments are going to leave them with disposable income. We need disposable income downtown. Programs like that is gonna, are going to help us. We need a restaurant downtown, which the, ban the, um, the Brazilian restaurant is supposed to be coming into the uh, Enterprise building. They're looking into that right now. So we need a uh, the restaurants, we need disposable income downtown, we need to continue. I'm on the, the, uh, the committee that t is taking over for the city buildings that were taken over at 19 Main Street, Petronelli Way, West Elm Street. The city actually has the ability now to take these buildings and put what they want into them. Bring business downtown. We have to, in to increase the commercial base to bring more. Mo okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure you guys have your closing statements. Yeah, yeah. Angel, a minute. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I think, um, you know, we definitely need to bring businesses in the, in the downtown area. I envision a downtown that is lively, that is family friendly, that is um, fun and, and engaging. And while we've made some improvements, you know, we could, we could do a lot better. I also agree that we, 
um, need some restaurants um, in, in the city, maybe with some outdoor seating. I know there's uh, issues around that, but that looks nice and, and mm -hmm. it's fun and, and friendly. I think we should also revisit and, and advocate for the universities and the state colleges to be in the downtown area. I know that that was uh, sort of shot down uh, due to funding, I believe, by the state. Um, cultural centers would be nice to see in, in the downtown area. Um, I think more importantly, if we had a, a major multi-million dollar youth complex of some sort, um, that, that would be fantastic. Um, and so I agree, we need, to, we need to bring businesses in downtown, we need to make it lively, engaging, family friendly, and fun. Um, we're not there yet, we could get there. Thank you. Okay, we'll go right to closing statements, and I want to thank both of the candidates for being here and being willing to debate each other. I want to thank my two panelists, uh, Steve Foote and Shane Barnes. So we will go, uh, the drawing was Angel, Angel first. You have up to two minutes. Okay. So um, Ward 2 is arguably uh, the most diverse ward in Brockton, uh, and someone who loves diversity as myself, uh, as a Puerto Rican man and teacher of history, I'm keenly attuned to the needs of communities of color and those who have been marginalized and flat out ignored. Uh, folks like the ever-growing immigrant brothers and sisters who have been demonized here locally, uh, and labeled incorrectly by some as criminals as a fear-mongering tactic in order to justify oppressive and racialized policies that serve certain interests um, and those who fear change and diversity. I'm sensitive to those returning from prison who have served their debt to society and who because of their flaws, because of flaws within our criminal justice system have to bear the stigma and label of a felon and whose quarries oftentimes impede sincere efforts at becoming productive and contributing members of society. I'm sensitive to those who find themselves addicted to drugs and alcohol and those without jobs or homes because who am I to cast judgment on the plight of others? Uh, if I am not actively playing a role in finding solutions or attempting to alleviate their pain and suffering, who am I to judge? Politics is in dire need of a humanistic, compassionate, transparent process of governing, one that puts the we over the I and the needs of the most vulnerable at the forefront. We need elected officials who understand that they are representatives of all, not some, not those who only look like they do or have what they have, but those who see the commonality of all of us as human beings and those who have a sincere desire to promote social justice out of love and respect for all. I have been that uh, person, that advocate in the city, and I will remain so once I'm elected into the position of Ward 2, and I hope that you can uh, count on me uh, for Ward 2 City Councilor. Okay, thank you. Tom? Well, oh, thank you. Thank you uh, for having us today. Um, I think Chana took my closing away from me, but <laughs> <laughs> all the things that I have done over the past years. Um, as your Ward 2 City Councilor, I have been accessible, listened to my constituents, and I've held regular ward meetings and actually had them on television for the whole city to see. So I brought people in there, I've been there for them, and I've shown, you know, I bring anything that's coming to the forefront, I'm getting it out there to the public. Um, and as I said before, as when we had those shootings, I held those public meetings for the entire city and also had those on cable also. I'm always there for you. I've had, in my first term, we brought back the walking beats. I was essential to bring that, the walking beats back downtown to bring safety to downtown and for the business and their customers downtown. That was something else I also did. Um, I, I just think that I've done this job for eight years. I have been there for everybody. I'm always there. I answer the phone the emails, everything. I think I'm just a blue collar guy who who's, puts his uh, nose to the grindstone and just does the job. And I don't think, uh, I, all I can do is uh, ask you for your vote on November 7th and uh, hopefully I can continue as being your World 2 City Council. Thank you both. Thank you both for participating. Um, obviously a very civil debate. I know you guys have worked together before and I think you're both a credit to the city of Brockton. It, and I just to say, if I wasn't running, I'd vote for him. There you go. Okay, there you <laughs> He's go. He's a good, good man. That's, He's a good that, guy. That's nice. <laughs> we so um, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, please stay tuned on Brockton Community Access for more election coverage. We will be bringing other candidate debates, uh, Councilor at Large, and we'll be participating in three mayoral debates as well. Uh, thank you for watching and most of all, Go out and vote. We don't want a repeat of the numbers from the preliminary. Thanks for joining us.